Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. Today we are here with one more interview experience. So wanted to know like what is the interview process at Persistent Systems or what kind of interview questions that are being asked at Persistent Systems, then this video is for you. So, do, so today in this video, I'm going to share my interview experience and going to share the interview questions that I have encountered at Persistent Systems. So before getting into that, uh, I would like to discuss about the interview process. So coming to the interview process, firstly, I would like to talk about the, uh, like how I got shortlisted for the interview. So I got a call from one of the leading recruiting consultancy and there we had a discussion about the role and what kind of skill set they are looking out for. So as luckily I have matched all the mandatory skill set they, that they were looking out for. So my I, I was shortlisted for the interview. So the role for which I have been interviewed was a backend developer. So coming to the interview rounds. So there were two technical rounds like one was at their both were at their location like one was face to face and another was a telephonic discussion like skype discussion so coming to the rounds like there were two or two technical rounds one manager round and finally an hr discussion so this was the this was about the interview process uh, process about and before getting into the interview questions in the next slide i would like to discuss about like who are we and what we do so we are basically a bunch of software engineers who are attending the interviews and sharing our interview experiences through these videos. So you can visit our channel and find lot like uh, many different MNCs interview questions that we have already shared. Uh, I believe this will definitely help at least few who are trying to switch. And if you want to contribute, you can feel free to mail us at the uh, email id that is given in the description you can share your interview experience and the interview questions as well so that we can upload and it would help and if you haven't subscribed yet please do subscribe as well so coming to the technologies that i have been interviewed so these are the technologies that i have been interviewed like java spring spring boot hibernate mm, coming to the questions so the first question was how will you ensure that the thread will be killed after performing its operation so i have answered it this way like a thread is automatically destroyed when the run method has completed but it might be required to stop or kill a thread before it has been completed in its life cycle so methods like suspend resume stop can be used to stop a thread explicitly so this was the answer that i have given so the next question here was there is a method in a jar file which is taking long time to get executed how will you fix it or handle that scenario so i have answered it like if i am having uh, access to the jar file like the code of the jar that is in the jar file firstly i would like to go and check the code like what method like what uh, lines of code that is actually taking up a uh, uh, lot of time uh, or if if at all that is a third party supplied jar then i will make the process call asynchronously so that the pro uh, the process runs in the backgrounds even though it takes a lot of time uh, we may not feel the impact of that time so this is how how i how i have handled the answer so the next question was to design your own hash map data structure so i was well aware of this question because as i am trying to switch i have been encountered this question in different interviews as well so i was able to answer this in a detailed way the next question was like he was actually ready with the question like he was having one class uh, this is the way the class looks so he wanted me to make this class immutable so as there is a list in that uh, he was uh, expecting me like how would i handle when there is a list in in a class which have to be made immutable so i was well aware of that as well so given the solution for that next question was what is has set and how does it work internally so i have uh, explained him in detail like what is has set and in which scenarios i will go with has set and coming to the internal implementation or internal working of has set has set uh, uses hash map only to store its objects whenever we create a hash has set object one hash map object associated with it also gets created so the elements that we add into has set are stored as keys of the hash map object and coming to the values the that will be defaultly null i hope so that is how i have answered the question coming to the next question it was about the internal logic of object creation like how what happens in the background when an object is getting created so 
I have explained him in detail like what all process that that happens when an object is getting created and where in which memory area it gets created and how it is uh, maintained and when it will be destroyed or it will be garbage collected and what will happen if we are extending different classes which object will get created first and all those things were also asked as part of this question itself so next question was about exception handling so in detail i have explained him like uh, why exceptional handling is important what uh, what are the different way to create our customized exceptions and what kind of exceptions we should handle and what kind of exceptions we should not handle and all such kind of questions were asked to me and i, I have answered them in detail like what all things related to exceptions the next question was about the memory areas in of jvm like he asked me to explain about the various memory areas of jvm so typically there are uh five i believe five uh, jvm is divided into five parts namely like method area heap java stack pc register and native method stacks so and later on i have explained him in detail like what all each uh, uh, segment will do so he was pretty much impressed with that so next question was a bit typical question i never understood this question to be honest in the interview like what is static constructor he asked me to be honest i was not aware of this at that moment uh, like i said the same thing like i never heard about anything called static constructor in java so he was okay with that answer as well then later on i googled it like there is no such concept called static constructors in java then he asked me to explain the process of uh rest service in spring how to how do we create a rest service in spring so typically i have explained him like uh, we can uh, divide the entire thing into five steps like creating a maven, maven web project adding spring dependent dependencies implementing the rest resources configure the rest api and deploy the rest service so this was the way i have answered it and the next question was explain how dependency injection and ioc inversion of control are related to each other and how do they work so in detail i have explained him like what are these two things and how they are interrelated and what is the impact like how they what is the importance of those these two things in spring framework so the next question was what are the different scopes supported by spring so in detail explain him about all the scopes in spring and he was he was pointing me he was giving me scenarios and he was expecting me like what type of scope i will uh, give it to the bean even that i have answered him so next question was the continuation of the similar question like uh, is singleton beans are thread safe in spring so the state forward answer is no and i have to explain him in like uh, what all process we need to do if at all we want to make them thread safe so the next question is differences between application context and bean factory so bean factory and application context are both interfaces java interfaces and application context in fact extends bean factory both of them are configured using xml configuration files in short bean factory provides basic inversion of control and dependency injection features whereas whereas application while application context uh, gives these two apart from these two uh, and gives some more extra benefits as well so explain him in that also like what all the extra things that application context gives us what are the different modes of auto wiring so typically there are five modes by name by type constructor auto detect and no type so this uh, i have explained him in detail like uh, like which hierarchy it follows and uh, what i can say like uh, he was giving me few scenarios as well so explain him in that what are the types of transaction management that's supported by spring so spring basically support transaction as uh, two types of transaction management one is pro declarative and other is programmatic then there was a question on this like when are we when are declarative and programmatic transaction management used like in which scenarios we should go with for, for declarative transaction management and in which scenarios we should use programmatic transaction management so the next question is what is dispatcher servlet and context loader listener so dispatcher servlet as we know is the scroll spring mvc application it is a front end controller so i explained him in detail like what is dispatcher servlet and coming to the construct context loader listener links the life cycle of application context of life of to the life cycle of the servlet context 
सो टू बी ऑनेस्ट आई वॉज नॉट दैट मच फेमिलियर विथ कंटेक्स लोड लिजनर सो आई वॉज बिट ओके ओके वेल आंसरिंग दिस क्वेश्चन नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन वॉज अबाउट एक्सप्लेन स्प्रिंग ए ओ पी इन डिटेल लाइक देर वर एन नंबर ऑफ क्वेश्चन लाइक दिस वॉज द एंटायर लाइक इट वॉट आई कैन लाइक देर वर एन नंबर ऑफ क्वेश्चन ऑन दिस टॉपिक सो फॉर द लेंथ ऑफ द वीडियो आई जस्ट गिवेन एम एट द कॉन्सेप्ट लेवल लाइक एक्सप्रेन स्प्रिंग ए ओ पी देन देर वॉज एन नंबर ऑफ थिंग्स लाइक इन वॉट सीन आर आई विल गो विथ वॉट एंड देर वर एन नंबर ऑफ डेफिनेशन ही वॉज आस्किंग मी वॉट इज पॉइंट कट क्रॉस पॉइंट दैट दिस सो as i was aware of this and i was having hands on experience on spring ap i was able to answer this as well so coming to the next question he asked me like what are the different ways to access hibernate using spring so basically there are two ways uh using which we can integrate hibernate and spring like one is the in inversion of control uh, with a hibernate template and callback and next is extending hibernate do support by applying aop aop interceptor node so these are the two ways by which we can uh, integrate hibernate and spring coming to the next question it was about the annotations like explain the he has given me n number of annotations and asked me to explain like in what are its importance so i have explained him the entire thing the next question was explain what is hibernate framework so the the expectation was like why actually hibernate framework came into picture what are its advantages what are its disadvantages why one should go for a hibernate framework and in n number of questions he has asked me on this uh to be honest so as i was having a good experience in hibernate i was able to answer and few i was unable to answer to be honest so the next question was explain hibernate configuration file so coming to hibernate configuration is file is low, file loaded into an hibernate application when working with hibernate so hibernate basically it, uh, the Hi hibernate configuration file is used to like uh, define the database connection details like username driver name password hibernate properties like dialect show sql second level cache etc and mapping files details so i have explained him in like all the things whatever that is supported in configuration file and so next question was the continuation of the previous question like expert in detail about the mapping file so what actually the mapping file contains what all are the different tags that that have that mapping file contains and everything he was asking me so in detail i have explained him all the things and coming to the next question name some important annotations used in hibernate mapping so what all annotations i remember at that moment i have explained him in detail like at the right entity at the right table column id generated value at the right version at the right order by at the right one to one at the right one to many at the right many to one at the right primary key join column at the right join column at the right join table so these were the uh, annotations that uh, i remembered at that moment and i have explained him in detail the same coming to the next question what is the difference between open session and get current session so session factory like uh, basically these both come from session factory so whenever we do an open session always open a new session that has to be closed once we are done with our operations but coming to get current session it returns the session bound to context uh, we don't need to don't need to close this well coming to this next question how to configure hibernate level cache second level cache is using eh cache so explain there there is a, a bit process involved here so i explain him in details detail like how to configure this he was pretty much impressed here as well next question was what is hibernate proxy and how it helps in lazy loading so explain in detail like what is hibernate proxy and what are its advantages and how it is contributing to lazy loading then there was a bit tricky question like what design patterns are used in hibernate framework so at that moment i remember like domain model pattern proxy pattern and factory pattern so i answered the same and there are n number of other patterns as well but i didn't remember at that moment so couldn't answer him so next question like was like why one should go for spring boot so explain him like listed out all the features that spring boot is providing and how it is helping developers in developing the production ready code next question was what does at the red spring boot application in annotation internally do so explain him in detail like how what is uh, like what uh, like uh, what internally like how it internally works like what all combination annotations internally it use and all those things 
அப்புறம் கம்மிங் டு த நெக்ஸ்ட் கொஷன் வாட் இஸ் த ஃபங்க்ஷன் ஆஃப் ஸ்வேகர் அண்ட் ஸ்ப்ரிங் போர்ட் ஸோ இட் வாஸ் அ பிட் ஈஸி கொஷன் ஃபார் மீ ஸோ எக்ஸ்பிளைன் ஐ மீன் டீட்டெயில் லைக் வாட் ஸ்வேகர் டஸ் லைக் வாட் ஆல் அட்வான்டேஜஸ் இட் இஸ் ஆடிங் ஸோ த நெக்ஸ்ட் கொஷன் வாஸ் அ வெரி ஜென்ரிக் கொஷன் லைக் லிஸ்ட் ஆன் ஆல் த லிஸ்ட் ஆன் சம் பெஸ்ட் ப்ராக்டிசஸ் வைல் கோடிங் ஸோ லிஸ்டட் அவுட் ஆல் த திங்ஸ் லைக் வாட் ஆல் ஸ்டாண்டர்ட்ஸ் வி ஷூட் ஃபாலோ வைல் கோடிங் அண்ட் பெஸ்ட் ப்ராக்டிசஸ் தட் வி எக்ஸ்ப்ளிசிட்லி ஃபாலோ ஃபார் அவர் ப்ராஜெக்ட் ஸோ தீஸ் வெட் த டெக்னிக்கல் கொஷன்ஸ் தட் வேர் ஆஸ்ட் மீ ஆஸ் பார்ட் ஆஃப் போத் த ரவுண்ட்ஸ் லைக் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஃபேஸ் டு ஃபேஸ் டிஸ்கஷன் அண்ட் செகண்ட் த கிளைண்ட் ரவுண்ட் விச் வாஸ் அ ஸ்கைப் திங் ஸோ ஆஃப்டர் தட் ஐ வாஸ் கால்ட் ஃபார் மேனேஜர் ரவுண்ட் ஸோ இந்த கம்மிங் அப் ஸ்லைட்ஸ் ஐ வில் பி ஷேரிங் அப் த மேனேஜர் ரவுண்ட் கொஷன் டு பி ஆனஸ்ட் ஆஸ் ஐ வாஸ் ஆல்ரெடி கிளியர்ட் த கிளைண்ட் ரவுண்ட் இட் வாஸ் எ ஃபார் வாட் ஐ கேன் செலக்ட் Uh, it was as as process they follow it was there but uh, to be honest you i was already selected for that position so the for coming to the questions the first question like was why are you looking out for a change so i have given my own explanation like why i am looking out for a change so next question any specific achievements that would like to share so i remembered few uh, achievements that uh, i personally feel proud so i have explained him the same like what all personal achievements i have achieved so next question was from how long are you attending interviews so to be honest i gave up like honest answer i gave like i have been looking out for 10 to 15 days it's been from past 2 3 weeks that i am looking out for change and i have attending the interviews and said the same thing to him so and then there were some general questions like what are your roles and responsibilities and all those things because uh, to be honest for the name sake this round was there uh, as i was already cleared the client interview he wanted me to sele- get selected so these were the questions that were asked me in the manager round so coming to the feedback of the interview it was uh, i would say that i i, I have a positive impact on the interview complete entire interview process as most of the rounds like was hap- like the rounds went as scheduled so there was no long wait for me to be honest as soon as i reached at on the time on time the all the rounds were started and coming to the salary that was offered to me was 13 lakhs per annum and coming to the the experience level for which i have attended the interview was 8 4.8 years of experience and for 4.8 years of experience 13 lakhs package i feel it is a good amount and coming to the location uh, it was held in pune so this was about the entire interview process and interview questions at persistent systems so i hope you enjoyed this video and please do subscribe share or like and provide the feedback of the video like whether you liked it whether or uh, anything needs to be added extra and if you haven't subscribed yet and please do subscribe or at least share this video to other technical platforms so that this may be helpful to someone who is looking out for similar kind of videos so with this i would like to stop the recording as well